Welcome back. We're two weeks into the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign, and Republicans and some journalists have been working themselves into a frenzy over a new book on the Clintons that's about to be released. It's called Clinton Cash. It's by Peter Schweizer. Alleges a too cozy relationship between donations to the Clinton Foundation and Clinton family speaking fees and decisions that were made by Hillary Clinton's State Department. Let me bring in the panel here to discuss how damaging they all think this is. Helene, let me start with you because the allegations... There A, there's definitely A and there's C, right? And then and there's yeah. been an argument, okay, you, uh, the, the, the trouble is how do you prove the connection? New York Times, your paper, did a big story on yeah. this Russian issue having to do with our uranium purchase. There's not a connection, but there is the appearance of impropriety. That's the biggest problem, and it all takes us back to the 90s. Is that it feeds <laughs> this aura that a lot of people have about the Clintons. I mean, remember that we've gone through, what, six years with Barack Obama, and you haven't had that, that atmosphere, mm -hmm. you know, that aura of there's something going on. People are now talking about the Lincoln bedroom again. People are talking about... It just brings... I think this is not... I, I don't think that this is necessarily that huge a deal, but I think that this feeds a problem that she's going to continue to have, and it brings up... Again, the, the sort of the why didn't they see this earlier? Why didn't they take steps to disassociate themselves? When she left the, the, as soon as she left the State Department, she went back to, you know, accepting uh, the Clinton Foundation that had sort of distanced itself a little bit from this, went back to taking some of, this, uh, some of these donations. And why didn't they foresee this? I mean, everybody knew that Hillary Clinton was going to run. I mean, so... That, that's the mind-boggling part. You know, Matt, by Jonathan Chait, who's no conservative... Pundit. He's, uh, I think, a pretty left uh, of center uh, in New York Magazine. This is what he wrote. All sorts of unproven worst-case scenario questions float around discussing this book. But the best-case scenario, he writes, is bad enough. The Clintons have been disorganized and greedy. He called the news this week, today at the time, about the Clintons all fleshes out in one way or another their lack of interest in policing serious conflict of interest problems that arise in their overlapping roles. Right. I mean, what a happy coincidence of publishing schedule and news cycle, huh, to yeah. have that book out. Um, <laughs> Look, let's be clear. I don't think anyone was voting for Hillary Clinton or, or is going to because of the threat she poses to the governing status quo and mm -hmm. the, the political establishment, right? I mean, it does it, does it hurt her with, with, with her voters, that perception? You know, she, she's not the reformist presence that a Barack Obama was and is. I, I do think, as Helene says, it's the arrogance of it. And, and I think it's something, you know, it's, the, it's this issue, it's the emails, it's the idea that... You, you know, you you never admit guilt. You never say you're sorry. You kill the messenger. You you, you tear oh, they're every, doing it. They, you know, they have this whole thing. They I, say it's a hatchet job. Masquerading as a book. They, it's yeah. sort of like, and as Ron Fournier points out, it's sort of like a standard playbook. Yeah, that, I, they, 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 it, they is it is a standard. It is a play. It is a standard playbook. It's the idea that you know you have to fight ten times harder. You know, you, it's the old line about the bringing a knife to a gunfight, right? You, <laughs> and I I, I think uh, that doesn't wear well in presidential politics, and it particularly doesn't wear well when it's something people are already concerned about. Where where you your candidacy right. is concerned. You know, Doris, eight years ago, Democrats were hand-wringing publicly about this. This time, they're doing it privately. I heard an earful last night from various Democrats, some who work in the Clinton campaign, who said, why is she still taking foreign donations? Why is the, why is the foundation, you know, they narrowed it down. Okay, now they're only going to take them from some European countries in Canada. They've gotten rid of some of the despot states that they were. That's the stuff that boggles the mind, but they're afraid of speaking out. I think what still boggles the mind is why doesn't Hillary deal with this herself right now? You know, I mean, if to a certain extent, when you have Mitt Romney saying this is bribery, bribery means theft, robbery it means taking favors to do something corrupt. You can't let that charge stand and simply say it's the wrong people telling it. When Teddy Roosevelt was accused similarly in 1904 of giving favors to big corporations and promising them he wouldn't do antitrust against mm -hmm. them, he gave up. Everybody said, don't say anything, don't make it right. legitimate. He gets up and stands up. He said, if this charge were true, it, I'd be infamous. This would be a terrible thing. But it's false. It's wickedly false. It's a false. That ended it. He said, you give me evidence, no evidence, he comes off with flying colors. I think she has to answer this herself. Look, Governor Hutchinson, you, you're from the Clinton's home state. Um, they have had accusations thrown at them time and again, and they politically always survive. Do you think this time it's different? Does it impact her base, the Republican base, but impacts the middle? Uh, what this does is reminds everyone that everything about the Clintons is complicated. <laughs> and uh, this is this story has uh, three ramifications that uh, bear looking at a, a awful, ungodly amount of money involved in these transactions. It involves a foreign source, and then it involves high positions in government, important decisions. 
Uh, no evidence of a quid pro quo. Republicans need to be careful not to overstate the case. But it reminds us that uh, uh, Clintons are complicated and they tend to make mistakes. Well, it'll be interesting to see how much more of this happens before Democrats start going as public as they did when I was talking to a bunch of them last night.